Hi. Well, today I've got what I've ordered a while back, my 16-bit ISA 16 uh, 16-bit ISA passive backplane. I got it right over here. So we're going to unbox it and uh, see how things are going. Test the continuity because, you know, sometimes boards aren't very Last time I ordered a big board, there was continuity issues between VCC and ground. So uh, hopefully everything will be okay. And uh, we'll look at a few things, but I'm not sure in this video we'll do the soldering of all the components yet. I don't know, we'll see. Stay tuned. So I'm gonna switch to the, the camera, the top camera view and cut up the envelope to reveal the typical blue JLC PCB box. By the way, newsflash, this could potentially be my last order at JLC PCB because I was approached by another company uh, to promote their services. So. Well, who knows? I'll actually have a sponsor for my channel. That'd be nice. So I'll let you know at uh, probably the next uh, video. But in the meantime, because I've, I've had this offer after I ordered the PCBs, but we can't let a, an unboxing go to waste. Oh yeah, I've ordered a few other things also at the same time. Um, Yep, yeah. I've got some breadboard adapters. All right, I've had I have here. I got to look closer because it's so small. And I hope that we'll be able to zoom in. If you look at it closely, I'll try to shift the, well, well, yeah, it's white, huh? so every, all the light is reflecting. Basically, it's an SOP28 adapter to DIP28, and here is a SOIC28 to DIP28. So you basically you can flip them around. They're numbered, so and there's all sorts of. Uh, uh, they, they they're basically the same size as a dip twenty eight. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so I can see it here, almost. I think we have the right angle right there. So they're reversible. Yeah. Next on the list. You know when you have a 40 pin header and you want to put it on a breadboard? Well, this is my adapter. You solder the uh, 40 pin adapter, uh, the 40 pin header here, and then you simply plug it into a breadboard, right? So, And this will align exactly like a 40-pin chip on the breadboard. The other thing, and I ordered quite a few of them because it could be useful. These here, and I hope I sincerely hope that I've that I did the right thing when I ordered these. Is I um, created my own paneling on these things. It's a, a breadboard power supply um, uh, distribution uh, system, if you will. Ah, what's wrong with this? I hate it when they're packed and. I have to really have to cut close. I don't want to damage the PCBs. There, let's take one of them. All right. 
So this is it. So basically I just, it should snap. Well, I think I'll have to, no. I think I'll have to score it and then snap it. Or put it on the side of the table. Hold on a second. Sorry for the... Uh, Yeah, not working. <laughs> Darn it. Well, I'll show you. Basically, on one side, you plug in headers here and headers there, and they will go here. This will not be, this will go for the other side. And you have your power in uh, barrel jack, uh, which is right here. Uh, you have a switch and uh, power LED, a few capacitors, uh, various sizes to, f uh, to do some uh, filtering. And, um, and I'm noticing that perhaps this might be, oh, no, 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 if I look here. And you put a header here, 90 degree header. And uh, let's take out another one. So I will have to cut those with a knife. You put a header with a matching male, female, and you just and you just add and add and add and add, and you uh, distribute your power all the way to the whatever length you have. And the same thing on the other side. It's just narrower because it's just. Well, maybe uh, a few capacitors also, if you want to install them. Um, that way you get a more stable power. It's um, the whole, um, I think you have ground on one side and VCC on the other. So it, it's spread out. It's not just one trace. The only traces you see, I don't know if you can see it here. It's just for the LED to go from the, res the drop resi dropping resistor to the LED. Other than that, everything, and also from the barrel to the switch. Other than that, it's the whole PCB uh, area is power and ground on one side and the other. Yeah. I just decided to do a few holes on this thing and apparently it's not enough. Maybe I should have made the holes a bit bigger but it's not a problem i don't think it's an issue uh before we go to the uh back plane i have made a prototype card a serial prototype card for my prototype back plane not this one but my old one uh, the one that you've seen before in other videos. Now, what I decided to do is to experiment with, well, we'll see, right? We'll unpack it and you'll, you will see what is on the board. Sorry for sorry if it takes a long time. There. All right. On this board, let's try to get rid of the reflection. You have a CTC, which I need to experiment with, and two SIOs. And the two SIOs, you have on one of them, you have an RS232 uh, COM1 and COM2. You have uh, both RS232s. One is in DCE configuration and DTE communication. Uh, DTE configuration. Uh, DC, DCE is data communication equipment. That means the connector is a female DB9 and that one is a male. So it communicates two devices. And the second uh, SIO, 
will feed two USB ports, uh, USB-B and, and USB-A type uh, COM ports. And of course, to uh, uh, be on the same, in the same vein as my other cards, uh, I'll have LED glowers. I like to um, light things up like a Christmas tree, like I keep saying. Oh yeah, that's my card. I'll experiment with it. And in theory, if everything works well, I will do my first uh, CPU card uh, for the backplane, the ISA backplane. Even though my other prototype board is using the ISA type edge connector, it is not um, mapped to the ISA stand, uh, the ISA standard, right? The power pins, it's ground on the edge, VCC on the second pins, and they're on both sides. So I, I am wasting four pins for uh, five volt and ground on the edge. Whereas the other one for my backplane, I'm using the same standard as the PC uh, ISA standard and the data and control lines are more or less at the same place data and and uh, address lines yes but uh, like read write uh, reset and stuff clock are all at the same place as the um, standard um, yeah uh, so I will be working on that very soon and la pièce de résistance this is my crown jewel for this month. I don't remember how much all of this cost me, but it was not cheap. Well, the others were cheap because I was a hundred millimeter squared for the other card and under 100 millimeter for the other device the other um, PCBs but this one was a tad more expensive it is not four layer it is two layers because the traces are mostly hold on now you'll see as soon as I get one out there's not much risk of getting crosstalk with this with a backplane. There. All the traces are parallel together. Uh, and on the other side, besides the um, ground backplane, uh, the, 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 the ground fill, there's only like a few traces going here and there. But it's not like as dense as here. You've got your um, bypass capacitors. Uh, you have your ATX power connector, so you can use a standard um, PC uh, power supply. You have here your power and reset buttons, and you'll notice there are two little uh, dots here. Uh, and I think I've showed you in a mailbag. I will be using the um, LED version of the push buttons, uh, which is going to be, uh, which is going to give it a nice look. Um, so yeah, so let's try a connector. I hope all the pins are all right and not bent, so we could. Well, yeah, there's a bent one here. There's a few bent ones. Yeah, so that's going to be the montage of this, of assembling all of this will be on another video, otherwise it's going to be very long. Ah, got it. The holes are uh, positioned, let me frame it correctly, the holes are positioned exactly uh, for an ATX um, uh, case. 
So you could put it in an ATX case aligned with the holes for the cards. Um, also, eventually, if I do get, if I do have a system of cards um, and everything works together very well, then I may make a full-blown motherboard with all the components, CPU, RAM, and use the I.O. ports, which are normally on PC um, uh, motherboards. I was debating of using all 16 bits are doing a, miss, uh, a mix and match of eight and 16 bit on the same. Yeah, could be interesting. Do a few 16, do a few eight. But these are older compared to these ones and they, they're not totally the same can tell by the um, the contacts so it might clash a bit I do have 50 of those so that won't be an issue I have here on um, the board I'm not going to put them into sockets because depending on the card you, you may have a card that goes lower here so they're going to be very low profile um, these will be part of the um, activity LED, which is which monitors the um, A8 line. Yeah, that's right, A8 line, uh, and also part of the power on circuitry for the push button, because when you it's a push on push off. It's not a, a any sort of mechanical latch. It is um, uh, soft power on, basically. Got the jumpers here, which will, uh, if you have, if you put them on a case, which are parallel to the switches, uh, parallel to the LEDs. So that way, you could hook up the LED and buttons to the case. Uh, the, exactly. Uh, these things you might have noticed are headers which allow you to um, use the functionality of the Z80 or Z80, um, the internet, the interrupt enable uh, function. If they are parallel, then it becomes a straight bus. It's a, so that way as it doesn't interfere on um, B, what was it? Was it B5, B15 and A15? Otherwise, if you use one jumper, uh, here on the left or on the right, the direction of the interrupt enable goes either that way or this way. So everything is labeled. Um, you have here, um, if you put a regulator here, you have your minus, basically your minus five volt regulator because modern ATX power supplies no longer have uh, minus five volt. So it allows you to switch between the um, ATX 3.3 volt or minus 5 volt on the bus line uh, on the power rail of the bus here and the reason I do this is uh, thank you phone for bothering me um, I should have put it in silent mode but it's too late now um, I will well, actually I'll do it now in case somebody disturbs me yet again do not disturb there um what was i saying i talked about this oh yeah the uh, minus five volt if i'm using a pc if i'm going to build something with an x86 8088 8188 or 86 uh, and I need the minus 5 volt, I just swap the jumper. If I'm going to do my own stuff with a Z80 or a 6502 and I need 3.3 volt, I just swap the the, uh, the jumper around. Uh, the older style XT machines and AT machines don't use 3.3 volt, so I figured that it would be okay to share that power lane between and and alternate between uh, both with a jumper yeah so that's it 
Um, let's test this, the continuity with uh, the power to make sure that there is no short with the power rail because that's where the biggest problem lie. All right, so let's put it on. And uh, am I in the right mode? Yes. All right, everything is identified here. Oh, by the way, in case you haven't noticed, there's a header here. Uh, it's a 31 pin and 30 plus 31, which match, which match the 8-bit, uh, the A side here and the B side over here. And they are labeled, the first row is labeled for the X86, second row is for the Z80, and the third row is the 6502. So that way, uh, if I decide to swap things around, change the cards, and I want to put headers, reversed headers, because the pins will stick out from this side, then I can plug this directly on a breadboard because it will fit and use all the pins of a breadboard except the middle portion it's like a it's like a psychological limit delimiter yeah so let's test the continuity between ground and VCC ah, good because I had issues before with that and yeah so far so good and let's test it I haven't identified the them on here so let's test ground here and ground here should beep 5 volt here and 5 volt here should beep. Minus 5, no. Minus 12, no. Plus 12. Ground, ground, yes. Ground here and ground there. Perfect. On first, you know, at, 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 I'm just looking at it quickly. It does look okay but i am noticing i don't know if you can spot them there are little spots here see seems like a probably a red residue uh or you know there were some bubbles in the solder mask that were not uh it was not uh i don't know i don't know how they get rid of bubbles during manufacturing or actually you know what no i thought it was a via sorry never mind yeah it's actual bubbles huh if that was there in my other PCBs I've never noticed it Let, let's try let's look at my other card let's see if we have the same thing now I do see those aren't VS actually Let me take a magnifying glass. Yeah, those are vias. That's okay. But I'm not seeing any sort of... Sorry, if I'm not in the frame is because otherwise I won't be able to see. Yeah, I'm not seeing the same effect. Let's look at the other side. Yeah, I do have the same thing. Ah, uh, you know what? Those are tented vias. Yeah, they are. 
No, 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 it's my bad. No, 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 there's tented vias and there are bubbles. Never mind. Because I, I do place vias from one side to the other, so there's a good ground uh, conductivity between both layers since it's only two layers and I don't have a middle uh, uh, a four layer board with a ground plane in between. No, so so the bubbles, it's it's mixed between bubbles and vias. I'll have to look at the schematic to see if there's a hidden via underneath that. Yeah, what's interesting though is in order to minimize damage to the traces where the pads are. Uh, I've, um, how do you call that, widened the um, trace to the pad with a teardrop. So it looks more retro when you look at it up close. I don't know if you can see it. Let's try to, uh, maybe in my manual zoom. Automatic focus, I'm too close though. Let's uh, zoom in. I think you can see it. Barely. Oh well, <laughs> if you didn't see it, sorry, trust me, it's there. So I think we'll um, leave this video at this stage and we will come back and do the montage. And unfortunately, I have no cards to test it with. I do not have uh, the uh, ATX uh, connector that means I'll have to purchase uh, to do a, a new order on uh, Mauser. It's already in my shopping cart. Uh, I don't have a no, I was gonna uh, do I have a 7905? Maybe I do have the rest, I do have headers, I do have the uh, ISS and the ESA 16 bit, I do have these buttons so. Yeah, I think it will be a two-part video, three-part video for this. And I will work on uh, my CPU card for this backplane. Anyway, uh, that's it for part one. Or part one of two, one of three, I don't know. It may take a, few, a while because of the orders I have to make. Um, but I wish you well and see you next time.